Hey everybody, it's Juice from Juice's Arthropods here. Um, I have to make some cultures for fruit flies, so I figured I would kind of walk you guys through how I do mine. Um, I did not make this recipe, someone else did, so I'm just going to kind of walk you through it. Now, I got this idea to start talking to you about it after I had already uh, threw everything in there. So, what I typically do is, first and foremost, is cinnamon. Cinnamon is going to be your best friend. It's going to make this not smell absolutely disgusting after I show you everything else. Now, everything that's in these, you could eat. You won't want to, but you, you could. Like, I don't know why you'd want to. But anyways, ground cinnamon, I put maybe um, about a quarter cup of that in there. As you can see in there, there's also some brown sugar. I just use some pure brown, dark brown sugar. It doesn't matter. I'm just throwing it in there because what it allows it to do is I add some of this active yeast in there as well. Allows it to get a little bit of the bubbly. What this does is it actually makes the um, makes your fruit flies just kind of the CO2 that's created from it. They'll actually begin to try to lay their eggs. So I'm essentially just forcing them to lay their eggs a little bit faster. Now I also add some nutritional yeast because this is just part of the. Um, it adds a little bit of B12 and additional vitamins for them. This is uh, you can get this at Target. It's the Red Mill brand. So I'm going to add some of that in there as well. And then most importantly, if you have two major ingredients that you guys probably won't realize is apple cider vinegar and beer. Beer because I want to add some fermenting smell to them and the apple cider vinegar this is going to also attract them but also and more importantly than anything else I say today it helps it to where it doesn't uh, begin to mold. So having a lot of vinegar in there. So what I just do is I add a cup of vinegar of this, I add a little bit of this, and then also I'm gonna show you another item that I add um, that is gonna make a good bait. Yes, you guessed it, uh, just potato flakes. That's all it is. Um, you can buy them at Costco or anything like that. They're massive. Now it's very important that you listen to me. This may have a piece of butter on the picture, but it doesn't have butter in it. So for instance, if for instance you decide to get this one, it doesn't have butter on the picture, but it does have real butter. Don't use that one. Uh, they can't really digest butter. It's not gonna be beneficial. It's gonna get gross. I think the gross thing is the thing you really need to worry about the most. So make sure it's real premium mashed potato flakes, you know, as real as mashed potato flakes can get, and then uh, add that into everything here and you will just have this amalgam, and then I will add in the beer neck. All right, so I do three cups of the mashed potato flakes, uh, just a couple, just a little bit of sugar. I mean, I say a little bit of sugar, but like, you know, a lot of sugar, apparently. I add a whole cup of the apple cider vinegar, and in fact, I'm probably gonna end up adding more to that to make it just a little bit more, a little less viscous after I add all of this. And then I'm gonna add about 750 milliliters of beer, I also take about two tablespoons of the active dry yeast that's gonna allow it to ferment a little bit. And then man, you can add as much of the ground cinnamon as you want in there because it is gonna to stink to high hell if you don't have some of these things. Now the apple cider vinegar is gonna make it to where it's not going to rot. It's not gonna get that mold, um, but you are gonna get a little bubbliness on the surface here. So I'm just gonna add the, I use this uh, acai, I think it is. It was recommended by a friend um, I normally do Guinness, but I'm going to test out their, uh, I'm going to use their beer of choice here. And then we're just going to see how it is. The Guinness I like because it just adds a little bit of, Guinness has a natural, like, almost like a chocolate cake smell, I guess. So I like that smell just a little bit better than the generic beer smell. Um, but it doesn't matter what I like. It matters what the flies like at the end of the day. So we're going to add just three cans of the beer. Um, be really funny if like they just banned me from putting this because I'm showcasing beer but I'm not drinking this for the record and kids don't drink it either it's not good beer no real exciting video here guys uh, just bear with me turns out you really can't make you can't make a beer pouring faster oh I guess I could have just edited this out my bad all right so now that I've done this some of you are gonna get real mad at this Yes, I know it's a metal whisk, and yes, I know that it's kind of a dirty, whatever the hell this whisk thing is, um, but I don't care because this isn't an old pan. I don't use my good pans for bug stuff. So just gonna use this. 
I am not gonna make you guys sit through this. Just whisk the hell out of it. When you're done, it's gonna come out just a really nice, um, chunky viscosity. Oh, God, what a horrible sentence that is. Um, but it's gonna be almost essentially like a cake mix or like maybe like an oatmeal. Now, I know some people, like I've before made it just a little bit more wet, so you can kind of pour it in there, but ultimately, you don't want that because what you want is you want it to be um, just kind of pour in there. And so when you're dropping out the fruit flies into a new cup, they doesn't spill this disgusting matter into the cup that you're doing. So it actually is beneficial to do this. Now, the why behind all the ingredients, beer. It's because it ultimately is going to have a bunch of CO2. This is how fruit flies know to lay their eggs. They think it's fermenting fruit. They come over that CO2 being created by the beer itself along with the CO2 being created by the active dry yeast. This is not only gonna add, it's just gonna add a little bit of fermentation so that they're really, really, really start to lay some eggs. But with the beer, it's gonna also help them lay the eggs. The cinnamon, it's for the smell. It is solely for the smell because man, I tell you what, you know what mashed potatoes booze smells like after a week? It's not great. Sugar is gonna help ferment a little bit with that active dry yeast. This nutritional yeast, that son of a bitch I didn't add, Okay, hold on, let's do that now. Let's try this again. Okay, now that we've got the active uh, yeast, or sorry, the nutritional yeast in there, it's just got a big old lumpy uh, grouping to it. But the nutritional yeast, back to what that does, it's just really good for vitamins. They're gonna love it. I don't care what this actually says. I'm not sponsoring this product. Um, but ultimately what it's gonna do is it's gonna be a really good food for source for them. Uh, with this setup, you're gonna have really chunky fruit flies. Now I am testing out this cheaper beer. Um, Guinness is just really expensive. Now I am going to be feeding probably I would say six to eight cultures with this. So if you just need to feed like one, don't buy all this. That's crazy. Just buy some like Rapashi fruit or Superfly for like seven, eight bucks. It'll just save you a boatload of time. So hope you uh, like this. Uh, like and subscribe if you do. And um, if you want to see more of these like how to make fruit fly cultures, I can actually show you what it's going to look like afterwards. I just wanted to show you a quick recipe. All right, bye.